Today, our journey to explore all 78 municipalities in Puerto Rico continues as we explore the town of Bayamón. We'll start at the Holy Cross Parish in the center of town, one of the oldest in Puerto Rico. Construction started in 1772, the same year that the town was founded in a place called Alto del Embarcadero. I'm not an architect, so I won't even try to describe this beautiful temple. All I can say is that it's one of the most unique buildings on the island, and it looks like something straight out of Europe. From there, our plan was to visit five mossy places in this beautiful town. After all, that's what the series is called, right? Well, guess what? We ended up visiting close to 18 instead. That's right, Bayamón doesn't disappoint. However, there was one thing missing that I realized later. <laughs> Way later, when I got home. But I'll tell you about that towards the end, just to see if you can guess. Getting to Bayamón is easy. It's just west of San Juan. However, we'll take a slightly different approach than what we've been doing for the first five towns. If you're coming from Isla Verde, take Road 26 going west. That's the Román Valdoriotti de Castro Expressway, until you reach exit 2A towards the Minillas Tunnel. If you're coming from San Juan, or from the Condado area, you'll probably be traveling east on Road 26. Well, guess what? You'll also take exit 2A towards the Minillas Tunnel. <laughs> this was a head scratcher for me because in most places around the world, when you find two exits like these going towards the same road from opposing directions, one will be labeled A and the other will be labeled B. But here, they're named the same. Anyhow, you'll end up in the Minillas Tunnel going towards Road 18. About two miles later, you'll arrive at a fork that connects with Road 18 on the left and 22 on the right. We'll continue on 22 for about five or six miles until we reach exit number 10, connecting with Road number 5 going south. Continue on road number five until you see the elevated train tracks on your right hand side. Get off road number five immediately before the second traffic light and take Betance Street going west. Turn left on Martí Street. That's the third one to your left. And right on Maceo Street. That's the second one to your right. Continue straight on Maceo Street 
to the very end. You'll see the Holy Christ Parish on your right hand side. When you get to the end, turn right on Palmer Street and immediately make two lefts. At the end of the street, you'll find a giant parking structure. And guess what? It's only a dollar for the entire day. I couldn't believe my eyes. I can't remember the last time that I paid a dollar for a whole day of parking anywhere. Hell, Richard Nixon must have been in office. From there, our first stop was obviously at the Holy Cross Parish. I've discovered that most churches in Puerto Rico, particularly the Roman Catholic variety, open early in the morning and close around 10. I don't know exactly why, but that's what I've observed. In any case, the Holy Cross Parish is absolutely beautiful. It has that old European feel with thick brick walls and stained glass windows that I absolutely love. Right next to the church is Bayamon's Town Square, with beautiful gazebos, lots of benches for people watching, and large trees everywhere. One of those trees was actually planted in 1905 by Dr. Agustin Stahl, a local botanist who is one of the town's most beloved heroes. Across the street, you can also see several buildings that show the town's original architecture. On the southeastern corner of the square, there's a stone monument honoring the Bible's three wise men. And right across the street is the Francisco Oyer Museum. However, the sign on the wall simply says Museo Oyer. Francisco Oyer was born in 1833. He was the first Puerto Rican to travel to Europe to study painting in Madrid. He played a role in the foundation of the Impressionist movement in France and was instrumental in bringing that pictorial current to Spain. The museum has paintings by many Puerto Rican artists and a section on the second floor dedicated exclusively to Oyer's work. We were allowed to film whatever we wished, except for the Oyer exhibit on the second floor. I guess it's fair that if you wish to see his work, you should visit his museum, don't you think? When we left the museum, there was this strong smell of coffee in the air. Puerto Ricans are coffee lovers by nature. So much so, that when my wife and I travel to the U.S. national parks, we carry several pounds of Puerto Rican coffee in our suitcase, along with an espresso coffee maker, just to have our morning brew. In some cases, we've even carried a small electric range just to do the job right. So as you can imagine, we were simply hypnotized. From the Oyer Museum, we walked north on the Geto Street for about half a block until we reached the Paseo Barbosa. It's a tree-covered promenade that traverses two city blocks until it reaches what used to be the home of Dr. Jose Celso Barbosa. Barbosa was a Puerto Rican physician, sociologist, and political leader born in 1857, who is also recognized as the father of the statehood movement on the island. He was the first Puerto Rican and one of the first persons of African descent to earn a medical degree in the United States. He also introduced the innovative idea of employers paying a fee for the future medical needs of their employees, a very early form of what we now call health insurance. The smell of coffee was getting stronger, so I just had to ask. The museum attendant pointed us towards a small establishment about half a block south where a bunch of youngsters had established a torrefacción called Café 2150. That's Coffee 2150. In English, a torrefacción is a coffee roasting facility in the tradition of how Puerto Rican coffee has been produced for centuries. You can actually witness the coffee being processed through a long glass window. On the way to the coffee place, 
we passed a small promenade where several small businesses sell artisanal products. There's also a small bar at the end with alfresco tables that gets its shade from several large trees and the train tracks above. Now, while we're still far from done with Bayamón, let me give you my preliminary opinion about this great town. Puerto Rico can be very political in nature, and most Puerto Ricans belong to their own tribe, if you will. But there's a small group of mayors that have simply risen above all that noise. They simply do their job, and they do it well. I could name them all, but I'd probably forget someone. So let's just say that the mayor of Bayamón belongs to that elite. He keeps his town in pristine shape, does his job, stays away from everyday stridency, and honors who needs to be honored, regardless of political ties. So how was my coffee? <laughs> it was to die for. After leaving the coffee place, we walked north just to see several buildings on the same street. We didn't go in. They're just pretty and we wanted to see them. The first was the old Chamber of Commerce building on the corner of Road 855 and Betance Street. And just so you know, Road 855 is also called Dr. Bebe Street. It's just that it has a number as well. On the same corner, across the street, is the old Oyer Theater, built in 1938 as a community theater. And finally, another block north is the old Loarina Lodge on one corner and a rather large food truck court on the other where the food trucks aren't actually food trucks. They're actually cargo trailers that are both larger and look better. From there, we had only two places left to visit, but they weren't within walking distance. So we walked several blocks back to our $1 parking and got our car. Our next stop was at Hacienda Santa Ana, a once sugarcane plantation established in 1787 that has been producing Puerto Rico's finest rum, Ron del Barrilito, since 1880. To get to Hacienda Santa Ana, we made a sharp right and a sharp left upon leaving the parking. Went up Palmer Street until we reached Dr. Bebe Street. Followed it until we reached the intersection with road number five. Turned left to take number five going north. Followed number five until we reached the exit towards Industria Lucchetti. Turned left, left again, and under the overpass, left again, and immediately turned right at the Rondel Barrilito sign. Rondel Barrilito is not your average rum. Most commercial rums are aged for a year, while Rondel Barrilito's most affordable bottle is aged from three to five. That alone makes for a smoother, tastier product. From there, it only gets better, going to 10, 20, and even 35 years in their five-star product. And there's another thing that adds to this rum's excellence. Rondel Barrilito is only aged in vintage white oak sherry barrels, never in new barrels. This lends a special taste to the product that you can't get any other way. People from all over the world come to enjoy the tour of their facilities, learn about the history of the Fernandez family, sample their different products, and learn to combine them and mix them. And in case you're wondering, yeah, there's a tour where you get to taste that 35-year-old masterpiece. For more information, visit their website or call 787-415-8601. From there, we had one more stop to make. We visited the Bayamón Art Museum, located within the grounds of the Bayamón Science Park. The Science Park is actually closed because of the damage it sustained during Hurricanes Maria and Fiona. But the museum is open. To get there, leave the grounds of Rondel Barrilito, turn left, Immediately make a U-turn to get once again on road number 5 going south. Stay on the right two lanes to take road 29 towards Ato, Texas.
past the first light and on the second one, make a right towards road 167 going north. Stay on the left lane. At the first light, make a U-turn at the entrance to Plaza del Parque and take the right lane. Make a right at the first entrance and you'll see the sign for the museum on your left-hand side. A little further down the road, you'll see the building on your left-hand side as well. The Bayamón Museum of Art is a modern museum that has one claim to fame. Everything inside has been made by Puerto Rican artists. It has a huge permanent collection by many of the island's most notorious artists and presents itinerating collections to keep the offerings fresh and exciting. It was the perfect place to end the day of walking under Puerto Rico's blistering sun. I have a special connection with Bayamón. My first two years of college were at the University of Puerto Rico's regional college in that town. In fact, I was one of the original 250 students when it opened back in 1971. But there was one thing missing in our day-long adventure. In fact, I realized it after I got back home. I didn't see any chicharrón vendors anywhere. After all, the town's moniker is La Ciudad del Chicharrón, the city of chicharrón in English. When I was a student, you could see pushcarts selling chicharrón con pan de hogaza on every corner. And what's that, you might ask? Well, chicharrón is a pork rind. But not just any pork rind. The ones in Bayamón were about 18 inches across. Just to give you a mental picture, imagine a cornflake the size of an LP record. <laughs> well, you'd buy one of those and it would come with a giant piece of bread. And back in 1971, it would set you back about a dollar. I wonder if they're still around. I don't know if you've been counting, but this series is called Five Must See Places in the Town of Whatever. And in Bayamón, I counted 19, and we only scratched the surface. If you like this video and you plan to visit Puerto Rico and the town of Bayamón in the near future, you'll find ample information on our website. You can also book flights, hotels, and car rentals at great prices on the right-hand column. And yes, there are affiliate links. That means that I make a small commission while you pay exactly the same that you'd pay anywhere else. That way, you get to return the favor without spending an extra dime. See you next time.